What's up everybody, Coach Mills here, and Act 2 of Valorant drops today. You heard me right, at about 2 p.m. Pacific Time, Act 2 will drop, and of course, this means Act 1 is ending. So if you haven't gotten that Battle Pass quite finished, you're either going to need to pay up, or you're going to need to grind it out in the last few hours before about 2 p.m. Pacific Time. So keep that in mind. On top of that, we have to talk about all sorts of news, like a free-for-all deathmatch announced, the Ignition 1.05 mode. Most likely buffs and nerfs, the introduction of Killjoy and how she's going to change up the meta, and of course some spicy drama involving TSM and Sentinels, some of the best teams we have right now. So if you enjoy this news roundup, smash that like and subscribe button, but enough talking, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So right off the bat, let's talk about Free For All, and Free For All is going to be a game mode where it's first to 30 kills, it's going to be random spawns with a 3 second spawn delay, it's going to be no ability but infinite money so people can run around with whatever weapon they want to there's gonna be 10 players in a lobby there's gonna be no spikes but every time you kill someone they're gonna drop a health pack that's gonna be 100 HP and 50 armor on top of that every five seconds a UAV will basically show everyone's location so there is no camping now the thing about FFA is this is amazing I mean we've been asking for this for a while spike rush was kind of a cute mode but it wasn't a replacement for mechanical practice and that's what this can do this can allow you to practice whatever you want to whether it's phantom play smg play op play whatever you want to practice gunplay wise this can help you practice which is really exciting for players like me who have the most papega aim especially when i don't warm up so being able to warm up in free for all as opposed to just shooting bots for 20 30 minutes it's going to be a lot more fun as well as make you just a better player overall now with the ignition 1.05 which we're going to talk more about when it actually drops later today but we've already gotten morello stating that we're going to get viper buffs cypher nerfs but they're going to be some sort of mix up we got sage nerfs but it's going to be a redistribution they're not just going to reel back her numbers anymore they're actually going to redistribute her power which is going to be interesting to say the least and both of these characters are probably getting nerfed because Cypher and Sage had enormous pick rates in the most recent tournament, so that makes the most sense there. And Rays is probably going to get changed in some way because Morello specifically doesn't like the direct damage of the ult and the blast packs, which don't have as much counterplay. They want a timed system or a timed counterplay where you have to get flushed out of somewhere. Like with the ticking down of like paint shells, they would rather have that kind of direct damage, not just damage that happens instantly. Instantaneous. Now that being said, not all of these changes could happen right now, but a good amount of them are probably going to be happening with the new Act 2. So look out for those and let me know in the comments down below what buffs and nerfs that you want to see. Now, the next thing we got to talk about is the introduction of Killjoy in the new Act 2. So what I'd highly suggest is try her out before you make any presumptions about the character. We do have some more info about her ability damage and cost, specifically with her turret. It's going to have 125 HP. It's going to shoot in three round bursts. And from 0 to 19 meters, it's going to do 24 damage per burst. From 20 to 34 meters, it's going to do 18 damage per burst. And from 35 plus meters, it's going to do 12 damage per burst. Now, this is not a lot of damage, especially with its really low fire rate. This is not the type of thing to just kill you outright. It's more of something that you have to respect, something that's going to take your attention. And Morello specifically stated that she's been in the game for a long time, and the primary use for turret in the development from all the devs playing it is that it's simply used to direct attention so that you get shot by it, you swing it, and then Killjoy herself is playing a cross angle looking to punish you while you're not paying attention to her. You're instead paying attention to the turret so if you're gonna be playing killjoy that's the first thing that i would suggest you try out try to use the turret as a distraction for your own plays now we're going to the next thing we got to talk about it's the new glitch pop skin which if you looked at the trailer it's like the most trippy thing that i've seen in a while it's like a japanese rave with drugs and weebs everywhere but for real though i kind of like these skins i'm not gonna lie these are interesting to say the least and i know that a subset of people are gonna really love them so it's nice that riot is not leaving any type of design off the table now moving on to the battle pass we're getting a brand new battle pass of course sad if you didn't get all the weapons for the last one but if i'm being honest compared to this one the last one was really lacking i mean look at some of these screenshots for the new weapon skins in the new battle pass specifically that middle one which is poly fox that one looks like absolute fire and i can't wait to get my hands on it i'm definitely going to be trying to grind out this battle pass all the way to the end 
Now on top of that, you can see right here, the knife, I don't know what it's called, but it's the final knife, most likely, in the Battle Pass Act 2, so this one looks a lot better than the one we got in Act 1. Definitely let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Now moving on to other news, the 30 Bomb GG tournament happened over the weekend, and if you didn't see it, if you didn't see our Sentinels versus TSM breakdown, you 100% need to watch it, because it's one of our best breakdowns yet. But Sentinels beat them in the Grand Finals, and it looks like Sentinels has found really solid ways to counter the op meta. They play for retakes instead of standing their ground. They don't contest mid on ascent almost at all. This makes it incredibly unlikely that we're going to see weapon nerfs in the 1.05 patch, especially with all the hero changes, buffs, adding a hero. I highly doubt that we're going to see any weapon changes at all, but maybe minor tweaks here and there, but I doubt that they'll touch the op in any meaningful way. Now, speaking of TSM and Sentinels, there was actually some drama after the tournament with Sub Rosa doing an interview where he basically said that if Sentinels keeps playing the way that they are, then they will be better than TSM. But Zoms claps back with this clip and let's roll it really quickly. I saw Sub Rosa's interview and like for him to say like, oh, if they win like a few more tournaments, then maybe like that's not how it works. Let me let me break it down. All right. Mm -hmm. There's two teams. If one team never beats the other team ever, how could that team be the best team? It just doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just common sense. That, that is not a, it's like one plus one equals two. It doesn't work. So basically, Zoms is just pointing out the obvious. TSM lost in the last big tournament really convincingly. It was an actual gigantic stomp that had Sentinels and Cloud9 in the finals. Those two are two of the best teams in NA, in my opinion. And then in this tournament, the 30 Bomb GG tournament, TSM was not only beat, sent to the loser's bracket, but after TSM climbed all the way up to the grand finals, they were beat again by Sentinels. So they got beat by them twice in the entire tournament. Now, yes, this was a lot closer than they were in the last tournament, but if we're keeping tabs, this Sentinels roster has never lost to TSM a single time. So you cannot make the argument in any type of esports tier list that TSM is a better team regardless of their record. Now, Sentinel Sick, who was our MVP player multiple tournaments in a row, this guy is absolutely nuts. He had this to say it was a pretty balanced take on the entire situation. It was impossible to say TSM was the best team based off one month of results, just like it's impossible to say that we are the best team right now. It takes months and months of consistent domination to be considered, quote, the best. Stay on your grind and let the results do the talking. Now, I really like this take, and this is a pretty balanced take from one of the, honestly, one of the most promising players in the entire NA region right now. So I 100% agree with him, just because TSM dominated all the early tournaments, and it seems that Sentinels is dominating the tournaments right now, doesn't mean anything when the meta and people are getting better all the time, new players are ending the scene, like, it doesn't really matter, there is no best team right now, but that's not gonna stop our channel from clickbaiting the heck out of it, so don't worry about that. Now speaking of causing drama and ruffling tail feathers, TSM Hayes was in an interview talking about one of the best EU teams, G2, and he, quote, said this, I gotta admit, G2 strats are a little weak. They have strong players, individually speaking, they're strong, but their strats are very weak. Now, TSM hazed comments is pretty interesting here because he's kind of talking trash about the coaching, about the strategic side, but says the players are individually good, they have good decision making, but this is still a rag on G2, and this is just setting the narrative going forward. I cannot wait until we have international LAN, meetups, or whatever. I really want to see who the actual best team in the world, because I know we talk about the best team in the world a lot, but typically on this channel, we're talking about NA, because if we talk about G2, G2 is pretty dominant. And it's actually impossible for us to find out who the best team in the world is until there's like a giant culmination tournament with all the best teams in the entire world. And plus, there's a whole bunch of big orgs and teams that are not even creating a Valorant team yet. Some Valorant teams like Fnatic won't actually be building a roster until 2021. We got FaZe, the big FaZe tournament that's happening this weekend that you should definitely check out. The FaZe team is going to be playing for the first time, so we're going to see how good they are with Corey and a lot of other Overwatch players. But the most important thing to understand is that the esports scene is growing and we don't know where it's gonna end up, but I'm incredibly excited. And if there's any in-depth fodder views or anything like that you wanna see, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'm gonna be breaking down some of the best games over the phase tournament this weekend, so look out for that. But that's all I got for you today. Smash that like and subscribe button, and thank you. See you next time.